First and foremost, I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and His Son, Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shah, Bashem Rukak, Wadash, and double honors to the apostles of the great No Stone, giving salutations also to the men of the Lord that's exhorting Yahweh Shah and pushing this ministry. And I say Shalom to the brothers that are growing thereby, heeding to this ministry, and as well as those that can't further the ministry due to the circumstances that they face. Um, but and yet and still heeding to this ministry and supporting what we do. Okay, and this and, and I can't forget even the Awafiam, the the um the Aquafiam, excuse me, as well. So let's get into this article and as well as this topic, and hopefully this will be interesting to you as well. So it says Finnish MP in hate speech trial after Bible tweet. A former Finnish interior minister has gone on trial for hate speech against gay people following comments which he says were based on the Bible. Prosecutors accuse Pavey, if I'm pronouncing the name correctly, it could be Pavey or Pivey, resonant of making derogatory comments on three occasions, including in a 2019 tweet showing verses from the Bible. Uh, Ms. Rosanin denies the charges and says she stands behind her words. The case is being seen as a test of whether personal religious belief can justify controversial language. Announcing the charges in April last year, Finland state prosecutor said Ms. Rosanin had made comments likely to cause intolerance, contempt, and hatred towards homosexuals. The charges relate to comments she made on three separate occasions in an article published online in a radio interview and then a 2019 tweet which included a fo photograph of an extract from the Bible. In the tweet, she questioned why the Finnish Lutheran Church was officially supporting Finland's Pride Week, and the attached photograph contains verses from the Bible which appears to describe homosexual acts as shameful, and the court will have to decide whether citing the Bible can be considered a crime in some cases in Finland. And um, dealing with the judicial system, the whole judicial system goes all the way back to the people of the Bible. Hence, it's called what it's called, judicial system, which the term judicial goes back to the term Jew or Judah. All right. And um, the judicial system originates, just being more specific here, back to the Bible, because when you go back and read the book of the prophets, the Old Testament, as well as even in the time of um, Moses, or should I say, um, well, Moses wrote the book of the law, and he explained that um, when, let's just say, something happened between, you know, two individuals, and there was a case presented by these two individuals, the priests would then judge the matter in the way that they would judge it. So the whole concept of judging people because they broke the law again reverts all the way back to the Bible. And the Bible has been the benchmark for their laws. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about the, judi the judicial systems all, all around the Western Hemisphere. They've used the Bible as the benchmark to, to come up with their own laws and their own ways on how to judge people. So, you know, to say that it's a crime to quote, a scripture from the Bible, you know, that would then obviously do away with their whole judicial system because the judicial system originates to the Bible, back to the Bible. And I mean, that's a video that I can do probably later on, Lord willing, when I get the chance to. And um, as well as the reason why you can't come up against the alphabet group because there's an agenda. When it comes to using the alphabet group and promoting the alphabet group and, 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 and getting people worldwide to accept this. And again, that's another video for another time. All right. But in this video, what I want to focus on overall is that the powers that be and just the society as a whole does not accept the Bible at all. But they project, you know, there's men that are... Um, are in high exalted positions in this world, as I'm going to say again, that project that they're men of God. And I'm talking about these people that are involved in the Roman Catholic institution, 
the clergymen, what have you, you know, they um, project, which have been chosen by the Masonic Brotherhood, which controls the system entirely, to project that these are men of God, when in fact, these are nothing more than, than witches and warlocks, and the biggest of, among them that you'll ever know. And even as well as these regular pastors that you see, and um, overall, you know, all of these paid off pastors that you know about, like um, T.D. Jakes, and as well as you had, um, and, I, and I think he's still preaching to this very moment in time, creeping low for your dollar, I like to call him. And um, these prominent pastors overall, these men have been paid off to serve a purpose, and the purpose is to deceive the masses of the people. And also, as well as pacifying people worldwide from, from getting towards the truth. And especially our people, because they know that our people are the children of Israel. And they know that our people have a strong connection with their power. So let's use the Bible to direct our people in a particular way from the truth. That's why you have these pastors to begin with. Which I said have been paid off. And have sold their church to their government. And that's who they serve. And they're doing the bidding of them. And as well as even these these Catholic clergymen. Which have been well known and are known to molest little boys. Even your pastors too. Alright. So anyway, let's get into the book of Daniel. The seventh chapter. Let's begin here by reading um, verse 25. So this reads, And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until the time and the time and the dividing of time. And in the book of Daniel 7, the um, Daniel, I was going to say the book of Daniel, the prophet Daniel, he makes references of the, the empires which would come after the Assyrian Empire, or should I say, in this case, the Babylonian Empire, because Daniel was in that empire at that time, so he was breaking down what the statue represented and all of the different metals and what all of that meant. And what it meant was the empires, as he was specifying already. So in verse 25, this particular beast that would speak great words is referenced in America. Okay, which is the last of the uh, the empires that which came before. Okay, so let's read this again. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. Because how did Esau change times and laws? Let's break that down. What did Esau do? And what what comes to mind right now is the fact that Esau has changed. The um the calendar that we that we used to go by because usually we would go by the the Hebrew calendar but because we live under Esau's governance we're going by the calendar the Julian calendar which are involved in these different gods as well okay so instead of going by the um the lunar calendar we're going by the Julian calendar and there's these gods or should I say the names of these gods. On these days, like for example, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, right? So all of these days originate back to, to, to a particular God, which, which was worshipped at one time, and as well as even the months, all right? January, February, March, April, May, June, July, and the likes. And also changed laws, because at one time or another, even in the time of the Greeks, you had the laws which were changed because they conquered the Israelites and they stopped them from keeping the laws and their, and their customs and that and, and turn even as well as their temple, living traded their temple, turning their temple to a place for exercise. And um, they wanted to get all of these Israelites and to make them to become Greeks. All right. So that's what this devil has done. He's changed times and as well as he's changed laws. So instead of, instead of going by the biblical law, we're going by his laws. As I've said, um, the Bible has been the benchmark so that they can 
come up with their own laws. And what I'll do is I'll do a video on that too, Lord willing, in the future on how the whole judicial system originates back to the Bible. <clears throat> Verse 26. But the judgment shall sit and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the very end of the world. And that's what's going to happen when Yahweh comes back. And when Yahweh comes back, the saints will take over and rule the kingdom and the entire earth, that is. So now let's go and read another priesthood. Let's get Isaiah 24, um, verse 5. You know, before I read that, I want to look up a word. And the word that I want to look up in the Hebrew is the word change. So the word is Shana, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, Shana, which you have to change, to be altered, be changed, to change, be changed, to change, transform, frustrate. And that's what I want to focus on. Esau has changed laws and times to frustrate the true way of, of how to deal with the people in terms of the laws is, is, is concerned because there's biblical laws and as well as we have the biblical calendar the Hebrew calendar that's what I meant to say and that's the, the true way how to, how to deal with um, again the world and, and as well as the people by um, giving them the true calendar because the, the true way came from the Lord and as well as it was given unto the Hebrew Israelites to profess to the nations so Esau has come around to change all of that all right, and this is why the Lord is gonna is gonna make a second return, as it reads. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the unto the ends of the earth. So Yahweh Shah is coming with judgment because of the wrongs that they have done, because of changing of the times and changing of the laws, and promoting this idea that it's okay to just do what you want. And men can do that which is unseemly as well as women can do that which is unseemly. Putting women above the men and just changing the orders of, of everything which was the, which was set up originally. So Esau is going to be judged on that. Alright? And Yahweh Shah is going to be the one to judge this man. That's why it says, but the judgment shall sit. Alright? So that's all I have to say on that. So now let's read Isaiah 24. And we're going to read... Verse 4, so it says, The earth mourneth and fadeth away, and the world languisheth and fadeth away, and the haughty people of the earth do languish. So let's look up this word languish in the Hebrew as well, which the word is amal, which means to be weak, to droop, to languish, to be exhausted, um, to pass of the heart, be weak, to droop, to be or grow feeble, to languish. And how are people grown weak and feeble? Because people are, are much more sicker than they were before. Now, do you know that the word weak actually means to be sick? So because Esau has led the world to sin, which the man of sin has begun to rule the world, and Esau can't help themselves, as it is written, the Lord who created all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil, right? And that he has also given the um the earth into the hands of the wicked Esau then went and altered everything as well as the ways of life by changing times and as well as laws so when you do that and people are misled into doing that which is isn't supposed to be done then people will have to face the consequences whether they're unaware of those consequences that they're going to face in the future or not People are going to be sick. Let's read on. It says, And fade of away in the haughty people of the earth do languish. The earth is also defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws. Changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Going back to the book of Daniel 7 and 25, how this man has changed times and changed laws. And this is the exact society we're living in. We're living in a society that involves... All of that, the changing of how things are supposed to be, because we're supposed to keep the laws of the Bible. We're supposed to uphold everything because the scriptures is the um, the manuscript 
of mankind and as well as on here on this earth, how to live on this earth. So again, as I'm going to say the third time coming, if you're going against that protocol, then all those protocols, you, you're going to reap the consequences. And as well as the man of sin is going to be shown, there's going to be an example shown worldwide. Just like how Yahweh Shai, excuse me, just like how the Most High has shown an example on the year before by destroying Sodom and Gomorrah. Why was Sodom and Gomorrah destroyed the way that it was? Because there was great wickedness in that empire. So now the Lord, through his son Yahweh Shai, and as well as even through men, the Lord is going to have to show, or in this case, the Most High is going to have to show another example for the world to see, to remind the world not to live like how these men lived. And this is why America, as it is written in the book of Isaiah um, 13 and Isaiah 34, that America is going to be wiped off the face of the map. And its code name in the Bible is Babylon the Great. So they're going to get that treatment. They're going to get the, the, the same treatment of what Sodom and Gomorrah got. <laughs> okay? And that's going to be the example for the world to remember. Let's get this. Oh, excuse me. Before I move forward, going a bit too fast here. So now what I want to look at is, um, I want to look at another word. The word we're going to look into is desolate. Now check this out. The word destit, which is awasham, awasham if I'm pronouncing it correctly. So it means to offend, be guilty, trespass, to do wrong, offend, trespass, commit an offense, to do injury, to be or become guilty, to be held guilty, to be incriminated, to suffer punishment, to declare guilty, to be desolate, acknowledge of offenses. And that's what the society does. This society persuades you or tricks you to basically becoming guilty of, of um, committing crimes. Now, what am I talking about committing crimes towards who? Committing crimes against the Heavenly Father. That's what this world does. It, it, it promotes the idea of you transgressing against him. And this is why in the book of John 1, it reads... That um, in verse 15, it says, love not the world, John 2 and 15, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, that the, the love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of flesh, excuse me, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father, but is of the world. So you have so many different things that are to ensnare you, to steer you away from the right path and to, to allow you to go off. And even if you don't know the truth, this is why if you don't know the truth in this world, you're going to do all kind of stuff. You're going to be led into eating abominable foods. You're going to be led to doing things which is unreasonable because you're in a world that promotes the idea of, of doing all of this stuff, which is going to allow you to be um, guilty of offenses, committing crimes, or transgressing the laws, have you will, against your power. All right? Because this world really massages your, um, your lust. This is the world of lust. As the, um, the slogan of Nike, when you see the slogan of Nike, just do it. So you may not see the slogan, you may not be consciously aware of the slogan itself, but being that you're unconsciously aware of it, and you're walking by it or past the slogan of it, it's a subliminal message to your subconscious mind to just do what you want. And that's how subliminal messages work. Like for example, um, which I'll do a video on this later on as well, about how um, down here in London, England, they're getting us ready for the chip. Now, I was out the other day, and it was like probably like around maybe six or seven o'clock. So on the bus stop, you know, I look to my left and I see this this phone that they're promoting. 
it wasn't really a phone, it was some sort of a chip. And the company was actually called Chip. And the slogan was to say, get this chip. So even though they're not talking about the Mark of the Beast one, <laughs> they're talking about something else, so it's reference to something else, right? But just with that slogan right there, it's, sub it's subliminally... Because you, you may not even be aware of like people that don't know what's going on. They're run they're they're um they're unconscious. So when you're unconscious to your surroundings, there's messages that can affect you without you being aware of it because it's 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 subliminal. The messages are, are subliminal at this point. So then you wind up doing things and saying things that came out of nowhere before. And that was all due to what? The messages that were sent to you on the wares. So that's it on that. So um, what I want to do is. Let's continue to read on. Verse 6 again. I'll read this again. It says. Therefore have the curse of vow the earth. And they that dwell therein are desolate. And therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned. And few men left therein. Exactly. Because men are going to be judged for the wrongs that they've done. For not repenting because see there's no excuse now. There's no excuse to say well I didn't know that I was committing transgressions against the Lord. You do know because there were men out there that actually went into the scriptures and specifically showed you um, the judgments and the laws. Alright. And the one last precept that I want to read is the book of Psalms 50. And in saying that as well, one last thing I want to say, and then I'm going to read this. Because before the Lord brings an end of, it, of an empire, and in every empire anyway, the Lord sends his prophets to profess or to proclaim that something is going to happen in the future. And it's either you get down with the program of the Lord, or you get taken by what's to come of that prophet. So again, as I say, you know, when the time comes... There's not going to be any space for I didn't know. Because the men of the Lord were, were telling you what was going to happen. Before it already happened. And now it's happened. And um, now it's just going to be too late. And you're going to have to deal with the judgments of the Lord with that. For not repenting. So now what I want to get is um, Psalms 50 verse 16. So this is Psalms 50 verse 16. And it reads, But unto the wicked the most I save. What hast thou to do, to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Exactly. Like I was saying um, earlier before about the judicial system, on how the judicial system originates back to the Bible, and um, now all of a sudden, they're judging this woman because she quoted a couple of precepts on Twitter against the alphabet people. And as well as what you have, you have these, um, these, um, you know, masons that obviously control and, and, and govern the world and having certain men to be evangelists, to be Roman Catholics and, and, um, you know, what have you. And these are men that proclaim to, to be men of the Bible, but these, these men are not of the Bible. These men are what you call witches and warlocks and they're the biggest witches and warlocks you'll ever meet as well okay and and i can't forget those 1948ers in israel too especially them because they have taken on our identity which actually you know you can actually take someone to court with that you can get arrested by um using someone's identity and that's what they've done a thousand times over you know they've taken our identity and and, and they're claiming to be us but in doing that, they're failing miserably because right around the corner, you have this city called Tel Aviv, which is known as Pink City. And you have those fruitcakes playing around in the streets and um, promoting this, this, this nastiness while they're there with the, with the Torah in their hand and, and um, proclaiming and, and um, you know, acting as though they're us. And ultimately, the reason why they have the laws, statutes and commandments to their advantage is so that they can look into the book. And I'm really talking about these cryptic 1948ers because they're the ones that's dominating and ruling the world. They have looked into the book of the law of the Heavenly Father 
and to find ways on how they can transgress these laws. And that's what they've done. And again, I mean, you can't get mad at these people because they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. These are the sons of the wicked. All right. So as it reads once again, but unto the wicked, the most I say of what has thou to do to declare my statutes or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth. Seeing thou hatest instruction and cast of my words behind thee. When thou sawest a thief, thou then thou consentest with him and, and they're the biggest thieves. And they're the ones that run and control the system and, and rule over the people and rob the people on the ways. Okay? By owning these multi-billion pound corporations that people work for and paying these people dirt cheap. Verse 18. Um, excuse me. Verse 19. I read that already. Thou givest thy mouth to evil and thy tongue frame of deceit. And thou sittest and speak of against thy brother, and thou slanderest thy own mother's son. And that's what they've been doing with this media, as, as well as right now, I'm um, down here in the UK. You know, they keep talking about um, a bunch of jakes, you know, stabbing up other jakes, and how, you know, this and that and the third, how we're criminals, and how we're the villain. Here it is, the, the main villains are, are villainating the, the, <laughs> the poor man, which is doing little to no hurt in comparisons to these um these these nineteen forty eight are doing. Being that they rule the world, you know, allowing um presidents to drop atomic bombs and missiles, you know, creating viruses and, and laboratories and what have you. So these are things that that <laughs> people need to be more aware of rather than the little Negro that's on the street corner. Like when you compare what these 1948ers have been doing and, and are doing currently, it's pale in comparisons to the criminal activity that the little Negro is doing on the street corner. All right, you just can't compare it. So let's continue on. Verse 19 Thou givest thy mouth to evil and thy tongue frame of deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother, and thou slanderest thine own mother's son. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence, and thou thoughtest that I was altogether such as one as thyself, but I will reprove thee, and set them in order before thine eyes. Exactly, and the Lord is setting us in order right now. Okay? And eventually, he's going to set the world in order by judging the world in an astronomical scale. So overall, man, I mean, this society that we're living in is, is hypocritical. And, um, you know, all of this, which involves this, um, woman here of, of getting on this woman because she quoted a couple of precepts on, on, um, Twitter, this shouldn't even really be a case if we live in a biblical based society, but obviously we don't because we know that there's people behind this society that control and rule the society as well as the judicial system, including they don't care about the Bible. They're not in sync with, with the words of God because these people are the wicked that the Bible speaks about. All right. So there you have it, man. Um, with that, I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and the Son. Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai Bashmi Rabakar Kudash. I mean, I don't know how I was able to get into this particular article, man. This article disappeared out of nowhere. <laughs> I don't know what I did. You know, maybe I clicked the wrong thing. I'm not really sure, but anyway, or maybe I did, but I just wasn't aware because I'm in the spirit. So with that, I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and the Son. Yahweh Bashmi, Shai Bashmi, Rakar Kudash. And with that, I say Shalom.